Oh, hello. How are you today? Good. Well, I suppose if you've made your way into my shop, that you probably know that this is a mask store. Now, it ain't exactly a run-of-the-mill Halloween party, what have you, shop. No, we sell masks of a different nature here. Now, some of them range from the useful everyday ball of clava S masks to the well, demonic and probably should have been thrown in a volcano type of masks. And well, the legality of some of them, let's just say, don't bring any police in here, please, because, you know, we're already almost going bankrupt as it is. A lot of the only customers that I get are well, like teenagers coming in here with their skateboards and their monster energy drinks. Saying, cool, dude, check out the scary masks. And maybe old ladies who think that they've come into a goodwill. But really, they've come into the mask shop. And not a lot of them buy anything. So... If I could steer you in the right way to maybe purchase a mask or two, well, I'd like that, and hopefully you would too. And I'm willing to compromise with some of these that I probably shouldn't even have on the market. So, let me show you a few of them. And uh, if you don't feel like talking to me, well, you could start perusing the store. You want to talk to me? Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Okay. So here is our first example. We got a ball of cloth. Now this one... I believe was a used submission from a man, a strange man, came in, had an accent that I couldn't quite pin down where he was from on the map. He said it was very cold where he was from, and they needed these sons of guns. That is is one of them masks that I'd say is, well, pretty useful. You could use it in your day-to-day -day life when it's cold outside. Kind of a menacing look to it. Yeah, I wouldn't wear that one unless he was, you know, maybe like riding snowmobiles or snowboarding or maybe even running in, in, you know, like the winter. You know, it almost looks like a motocross mask. And that one, well, it's one of them everyday type of masks. Nothing too special, but functionality over anything else. I'll tell you something, I'd wear it. So that retails at about fifteen ninety nine, And them cloth fibers are, you know, they'll keep all the rain out and all the cold weather. Don't want to wear this in the desert. Trust me, I tried. 
and let's just say they found me three days later drinking out of a lake but it really wasn't a lake it was well a sand pit and I had a mouth full of sand it was one of them mirages that they talk about but we don't talk about that anymore Might I interest you with another one of these masks? One that could be one of my personal favorites. Now this is a sort of two-for-one type of deal. And it's your average clown mask. Now, if you were to warn this maybe about a year or so ago, you might have been run out of town with a pitchfork. I believe that the man that brought this in here was actually just on his way from being run out of town. And he was one of the very reasons that we got this mask. He come in and he said, he said, buddy, you can even just have it. He said, if they find it, and I, you know, could get in trouble. I guess he was running around making a ruckus or something. Wasn't really too sure, but, you know, he was kind of a strange man. But we see a lot of strange people around here. You know, the guy's hair kind of reminded me of one of them skunks. You know, it was kind of like a black hair with a white stripe in the middle. And, uh, well, he didn't really smell too good either. Could have been like a, you know, maybe he didn't shower too often. Or, don't worry, I sanitized a mask and a wig. And these, you know, are totally disinfected. And they are top quality, may I say. I always thought what gave items character was uh, the way they were used. Or rather, the amount that they were used. And you can tell that he may have got some good use out of these. Hopefully for, you know, a good reason rather than a bad reason. Maybe for Halloween or something. Birthday parties. But maybe he was running around scaring people downtown or something. I didn't ask too many questions. So... What are you thinking about these two masks that I've shown you so far? Got your eye on the ball of clava, sorta? Okay, well, I'll tell you something, I really like that one. Like I said, I was using it in the desert once. And I, you know, weren't really a fond memory, but, you know, those were the good old days, let's just say that much. Okay, let me grab you another example here. So this one, this one begins some of the masks that are, well, Probably not a good idea to keep on the shelves. You know, there was this pizza place they had. And they had all of these animatronic figures in that shop. And, uh, well, it was rumored that them figures was haunted. And 
some bad things happened in that pizza shop, and I think they may have even closed it down. Well, we had a man come in here, a strange man in a purple suit. He said, I gotta get rid of this mask. He said, it is evil. And any of those who may wear it take on the persona of the animatronic figures from that pizza shop. Well, I didn't take my chances putting it on due to the simple fact that, well, I like how I am. I ain't really interested in becoming some kind of animatronic animal, you know. I was born this way, the way I look, and I'm happy with that. He was in a, you know, trying to get out of here pretty quick. Said something about, I gotta get rid of this Freddy mask. You know, I gave him like 40 bucks for it. Just because of the simple fact that, well, you know, it seems like a good mask. And I believe I'd sell this one for about 200 bucks. Now it makes me feel kind of bad marking up the price that high. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a business. And, you know, I like to be a nice, honest, reasonable guy. But I just had to mark it up. And I'm sorry if that makes you not want to buy this. But to be honest, this is one of them masks that I hope that nobody ever purchases. In fact, I was about to throw it in, you know, like the fire the other night. You know, sometimes in my spare time, I'll chop down some trees. Got a nice fire going. Burn some marshmallows and put them in a hot dog bun. And think of all the different masks I've seen in my life. I've seen a lot of good masks come and go. I've seen a lot of happy customers leave my store with smiles on their faces. And when someone's happy, I'm happy. When I can be the vehicle for that emotion, it does my heart good. And that's why, well, I don't really try, you know, feel too good about selling these. Notice how I didn't put it over my head. Because like I said, this might turn you into a dang bear. And uh, judging about that story they told me about that Fozzie Bears pizza or something I can't really remember. It was about three years ago. I don't really want any part of this mask. You're interested in this mask. Well, let me set it aside for you. And if you change your mind, we'll put it back. You know, I'll we'll get a pile going for masks that you might want to take home with you. Okay. This next mask, well, I'll tell you something. It looks pretty, pretty dang scary. And that's because it's a pig mask. I sometimes look at this mask. You know, I call this Mr. Bacon. 
not to be confused with Kevin Bacon, but rather, you know, just like Mr. Bacon. Say, Mr. Bacon, what's shaking? And he says, <clears throat> he's got a weird voice. But a lot of people have weird voices. Well, ain't nothing bad about this one, if you ask me. A man who was a pig salesman brought this in. And he said, Sir, he said, I'll use this mask to, uh, well, to make my pigs happy. I put this thing on. I go in the pig pen. I splash around in the mud. And I have a great time doing it. And I thought to myself, well, that's a little strange, but, you know, as long as no one's getting hurt, well, sounds fine to me. Anyway, he said that when he'd jump in that pig pen, them pigs would be well happier than a pig in you know what, as the old saying goes. So there's the pig mask. I believe this one is kind of like imbued or got like the essence of happiness in it. And it's funny due to the simple fact that, well, it looks a little bit scary, but if there's something that I learned in my life, it's that, well, looks can be deceiving sometimes. And, you know, never judge a book by its cover. But sometimes we're always guilty of doing it. That one, you know, I'd say that's about 70 bucks. 70 bucks. What'd you say? You're rich. Almost lost my mask there. One thing about these that I try to do so I try not to let them hit the ground or anything like that. Because if you'll believe it, well, like I said, these masks, some of them can like sort of give you strange powers and all of that. And it just so happens we got a rat infestation around these parts. And if one of them suckers gets in that mask, well, we got a real dang powerful rat running around now, don't we? And I don't trust it as far as I can throw it. And that's a promise. So, I realize some people may feel uneasy when they come in here, you know. A mask shop kind of sounds a little scary. But like I said, you know, I'm pretty passionate about what I do and my knowledge base of all these masks. And you know, the, the joy they make certain people feel or the history behind them. Now this one, I believe a beauty queen used to wear. I thought it was strange, just due to the simple fact that, like, you know, she looked fine. But she said, this mask gives me confidence. She said, I won like 7,000 beauty contests with this mask. And she said that the prize for each of them was pretty high and it, it sort of turned into like a good luck kind of thing. 
So she always wore her lucky mask, as she put it. Now this is another one of them kind of freaky ones. You know, kind of lifelike. It even makes me uneasy, and I've seen a lot of stuff around here. But to take the sort of like some of the scary away from it, every now and again I'll say, you got any good boogers up there? Guess not. Never does, but, you know, helps take away some of the fright for this one. Well, that girl, you know, she's been in here a few times since. She bought quite a few of my masks. And, you know, pretty loyal customer. Always gives me good conversation. Kind of like you're giving me now. You know, just, you know, like kind of nice human interaction. If I can be honest, it gets a little bit lonely in this store sometimes. And, well, people coming in is always a joy. This one I say I'd sell for about 2,000 bucks. And before you get sort of like up in arms about that price, well, it's due to the simple rich history behind it. And when I say rich history, well, literally rich history. You know, I think she made herself a cute few million off of this mask. And maybe you can too. It depends. Now I always say a mask must be used for the right reasons. And if it isn't, well then, it's a dang shame. And it's my greatest fear that people let these, you know, be used for bad purposes, like scaring people or something, you know? I just want people to be happy. So what are we thinking about these? You want to go with the Freddy mask? You want to also go with the this one? Well, okay. Just because I like you, I'll do that for you. And let's say we'll even, we'll take 50% off of each of the prices. Now that's going to hurt my business. But you've given me, you know, very valuable conversation today. And I hope that these make you happy. Like I said, you got to be careful with this one. Okay? This one. Interesting choices you made. Well, I suppose we'll bring you up and throw these in a nice bag. Since they're latex, I usually like try to put them in a nice bag with some newspaper in it. I guess it's supposed to like make them last longer or something like that. Well, thank you so much for coming in here today. And I hope you'll visit again. It's been my pleasure showing you some of these great historic masks. And I hope I see you again pretty soon. I'll bag these up for you. You know, we take like cash or card. I think the only thing we don't take is maybe like euros or something. 
and I'm sorry about that, but the exchange rate is sort of like high around these parts.